Before you watch this show that Ben Conger in, I want to tell you about a technique I use. It's a psychological technique to invoke a response on an EVP. What I did purposely was use the name Lulu as Dutch Schultz's girlfriend, when indeed his girlfriend's name was Francis, and we all know that. Now, Bernard Lulu Rosencrantz, along with Francis and Dutch Schultz, were very, very close friends. In fact, so close, I thought if I used one as his girlfriend, that maybe I could invoke a response. And boy, did I. So as you're watching this and you hear me talking about Lulu being his girlfriend, get a little chuckle about it. It was done on purpose. So you can hear the amazing EVP at the end. Enjoy. A special heartfelt thank you to Peter and Douglas, the innkeepers at the Ben Conger Inn in Groton, New York. You were both generous and hospitable. Thank you so very much for your hospitality. Love you both. Now let's enjoy the show. Welcome to the Ben Conger Inn right here in Groton, New York. This beautiful home was built in 1921 for the then Senator Ben Conger. But a lot of things changed. It is also the home of a notorious mobster, Dutch Schultz. Let's find out all about him as we journey through time in this lovely home. In just a few short months after this lovely home was completed, Senator Ben Conger passed away in 1922. And in fact, he passed away in this very room. Shortly after Senator Ben Conger passed away, his wife sold the home, and that is where the dark side comes in. With the notorious mobster, Dutch Schultz. Now I'm going to take you on a journey back in time. There's a story that was presented to us by a woman, Irene, who has passed away. But when she was five years old, she witnessed something, and she passed it on. I'm standing here with Lorna Reynolds. She's a psychic medium from the Groton, New York area. How are you doing, Lorna? I'm doing great, Cece. How are you? I'm doing good. It's good to see you again. It's good seeing you. Now, Lorna was very instrumental in helping us get into the Ben Conger Inn and be able to film this program. She also is an asset when it comes to finding tunnels with her psychic ability. Now, I wanted to tell you about a story about a five-year-old girl. Her name is Irene. She lived on this property here, which abuts the railroad tracks where Dutch Schultz used to travel up and get out and go into the Ben Conger Inn. Not only that, but he bootlegged whiskey out through the tunnel, back onto the trains, and into New York City and into New Jersey. Now, when Irene was a little, little girl of five years old, she used to come this way, and of course it wasn't overgrown, and she used to look down the railroad tracks, and she used to see what was going on with the mobsters. Dutch Schultz was born in 1902 and died in 1935. He was born with the name of Arthur Flegenheimer. He quickly changed that when he got into being a mobster and stealing things because in the years of the depression and bootlegging and prohibition, <laughs> he stole the name of a local mobster who had really bad abusive behavior and he became at that time the legendary, infamous, Dutch Schultz. On October 23rd, 1935, Dutch Schultz was shot and killed in a restaurant in Newark, New Jersey. But before he died, it is said that he took his treasure from seven to nine million dollars in front of witnesses and put it in an iron box. Him and his so-called girlfriend, Lulu Rosencrantz, buried the treasure. This is the map that Lulu drew right here, giving the exact location of the so-called treasure. 
Well, let me tell you, the treasure has never to been found. It could be anywhere. It could be right here on this property. It could be in the tunnel. <gasps> Maybe it was divvied up against another wife and God knows how many kids. But I'm here to show you the tunnel with the help of Lorna Reynolds. Let's get to it. So what we're doing now is we're taking the actual path that we believe the tunnel is under. Now if you focus back on the main house, you can see the corner of the home, which we're going to be in later. Now Lorna came this way, and as she started to walk straight ahead, take it away. I noticed by the lay of the land and everything and the way that we had a few sinkholes here that it got kind of curious and it just kind of directed me right over here to this area. And the fascinating thing about this area here is the position that little Irene, when she was five years old, she would look down the path and she would see the exact location where the men were entering the tunnel. Yeah. What I want to do now is I'm going to climb down there. You can join me if you want to. But I'm going to climb down there and I'm going to show people the position of where the tunnel is. Great. Okay. Alright? No, I got it. Hold on. Oh, come on, you're sliding. Oh. No. Alright, here. Ow. Here, hang on to me. Get, get past oh, me. Oh, shit. Oh, shoot. You alright? No, I'm Everybody? good. I'm good. I got it. Okay, got the tree. Alright. Okay. I'm gonna come down. Okay, what I want you to do now is follow me down here just a hair so I can show you something really cool. Right here, in this section, where I'm supposed to be standing, right here. Can you see this? What do you notice oh, yeah. when you look at this? There are no trees here. Look at all the trees around it. But there are no trees right here. Behind us used to be the old train station. What Dutch Schultz needed was a tunnel that he could come out and then come down to ground level. One that was maybe on a slant so it wouldn't fill up with water. Because of how loosely packed this dirt is, it's not solid like where the trees are to contain them. It's all loosely packed right here. I believe this was the entrance of the tunnel, yet now filled in. And I have more proof. So, Let's go inside the house, and I'll show you that proof, too. Let's go in the basement and I'm going to show you the rest of the proof. We're in the basement of the Ben Conger Inn and I want to show you where I believe the tunnel is. And we found this today just doing some experimenting like where would it be? Where would it be? So what I do is I like to look for breaches in the wall. I look for mortar that doesn't fit that may have been displaced. And I found it. It's right here. Come back here. Oh, look at these. Aren't these cool? 
I wonder if at one time he might have had a speakeasy down here. But inside here, if you look at this wall here, this section right here in front of me has been replaced. This one panel, this whole panel has been replaced. It's not there. There's the foundation outside. But that wall has been replaced. That's all. That mortar is different. So if we come and follow the path over here and go under the stairwell, I'll show you another place. You might want to turn on the big uh, lead light so you can really get a look at this in here. Be careful. It is really, it's dangerous back here. Okay, here's where it came in. This is a replacement patch right here on this wall. That's the replacement patch there. Now if you turn directly here, we have, voila, a cut hole in the cement. And it's braced up. Although these braces look fairly new. What we have is a wall that doesn't belong to the other walls. It's completely different. And the mortar, cement, the mortar is different than from the sides. So now, let's take a reverse and go this way. See, he needed a way to be able to wheelbarrow or roll the barrels of bootlegged whiskey down to the railroad tracks. Now, that goes completely under the stairwell here. See the stairwell? It goes completely under the stairwell. And I'm going to pop you right outside where it comes out. Now this is the other side of where the stairs came out from the basement that we just showed those stairs. You come out here, and right about here would be those passages where the mortar was different. Under the stairwell, clear this way here on a track past the shed and on the other end, where you saw Lorna and I, if we take a straight shot, we're down where that dirt is not compressed well after all these years and no trees stand because they can't stand in dirt that's not pressed down. But yet you saw all the other trees hanging about. But in that one section where you could visibly see a tunnel entrance, <laughs> that's where it is, exactly where it is. Now listen, we're gonna come back here tonight and we are going to investigate and call forward the spirits from the Ben Conger Inn, whether it's Dutch Schultz, whether it's L Lulu Rosencrantz, or whether it is Ben Conger himself. See you tonight. What I want to do first before we start this investigation is to use my white sage spray. Now white sage, as you know and you've heard me say many times before, that it has been used for thousands of years to calm the area down, calm spirits down. It also makes an even playing field, at least for me, for the living and the dead to be able to communicate. And that's what we want to do here at the Bed Conger Inn. We want to be able to talk to Dutch Schultz, possibly his girlfriend, Lulu, maybe even the Senator Ben himself. I come in peace. I bid you no harm. I want you to come forward and communicate with us. All the spirits within this home, please come forward. All the spirits that have association with this home, please come forward, especially Dutch Schultz, Lulu. <laughs> I have a daughter named Lulu. And Ben Conner himself. I pray this in your precious name, Lord. Oh, that stuff smells so good. Now that I've done that, I want to walk into one of the dining areas and do a little bit of EVP work. So why don't you follow me in there? Spirits of the Ben Congeran, can you hear me?
Can you see me? Can you feel my presence? Spirits of the Ben Congerin, can you hear me? Again, I'm going to ask for the spirits in this inn to come forward. I want you to make a sound, any kind of sound. You don't have to be shy. I come in peace. What is your name? something from in this room here. I don't know. A door closing almost. Yeah, yeah, it sounds almost like a little, like a squeak of a door or something like that. I thought I heard that too. There's, there's someone down here, right? No. No. Okay, let's go get anything here. I know you can see me. And I know you know my name. Can you say my name? Can you touch one of us? Can you make a sound? Like a bang, like a knock. Can you make a sound? Another one. Another knock. Exactly. Okay, I'll play that back. We heard two knocks. I know you can see me. And I know you know my name. Can you say my name? Can you touch one of us? First knock. Yes, no, yep. Can you make a sound? Second knock. Okay, we get two knocks. All right. What, what I want to do right now is I want to go up to the attic and I want to do a powder test, and I'll explain that when we get up there. Now the powder test is a test that I've developed. And what I like to do is I like to put the powder down, take a bunch of pictures, and then come back later. 
So why don't we come over here, Bob, and uh, move for a flat surface, not near any windows, not near anywhere. Okay, you can watch me sprinkle it. Okay, looks good enough. Let me take some photographs. Okay, I'd like to take three pictures. Could you zoom in on that? I do. And remember the, do, you're going to be able to remember the angle that we're at? Okay, yep. what I want to yep. do is, um, okay, great. Excellent. Shut this off, get a better, uh, okay. better view of it. Okay, we're going to be heading down that corner there. Okay. I'm going to take some photographs around here first. Feeling uh, like almost a rapid type heartbeat. It's a little bit harder to breathe up here. Could be because of the heat. Let me see if we have anything here. Yeah. I'm going to. Gosh, I'm not so sure you can catch us on here. But um, hold on. I do have an orb. <laughs> wow, that's the wrong picture. The camera's not functioning. Not sure if you can really see it, but it's right under those numbers. It's right there. Someone's very hard to get a good good view okay. of that screen. We should pop them up at the end. I, I'm not going to be able to uh, focus There's on There's one them. over there. Yeah, I, I, I can't see the screen through this camera. Okay, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll take a few more photographs and then I will um, blow them up and take a look at them. And you can look at them as well. But I really do feel something up here, presence of some kind. Continue down here. going to do a pendulum. Anybody's familiar with the pendulum? I'm going to try to get the spirits to move it. Except for I have to do it in total pitch darkness because I can't see a thing and the only one I can see is a videographer. Because nope. I just put my flashlight down. Can you see this okay? Yeah. Now you know there will be a little bit of movement in a pendulum. Not everybody's hands are steady. So there'll be a little bit, but let's see if we can get a spirit to move it. If there is a spirit up here, the one I'm taking pictures of with orbs, can you please just, just move the pendulum just a little bit? Just a little bit. 
Can you just get it to rock back and forth? Just a little bit. Wow. Well, Is it moving? Yeah. You can see it? Yeah, definitely. Excellent. It's spinning in a circle right now. It is? Oh, I can kind of see it. It catches on. Yeah, I can see it's just hair. Can you get it going faster? Thank you, Spirit. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to ask something that's scientifically impossible right now. And if you are a spirit, you'll be able to do it. Stop the pendulum. And if you know anything about science, momentum and inertia, you know it has to complete by going slowly increasing and bigger and bigger and then slowly coming down. Only a spirit can grab that energy and stop it like that. Okay, I'm going to take some heat readings here as well. It's 90.5 degrees up here in the attic. Eighty nine point five degrees. We want one degree down. Eighty nine degrees. Can you see these readings at all on here? They're pretty consistent. We get ninety point five again. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, and if we move it, it doesn't really deviate all that much. Here we get 89. Can you get the 89? Yep. Sew it down one and a half degrees. And as we walk, we've got 88 degrees. A couple hmm. more degrees it went down. Uh-oh, 87.5. Uh-oh, it just was. Oh, 87. Do you see it flickering back and forth? Yep. Got to tap the zoom in on. Yeah, 87.5. Okay. At this point, I'm going to take the camera back out. I'm going to take a few more pictures. In the direction of the flicker. I don't see anything. Interesting. Usually when it does have a temperature deviation up or down by, I don't know, between 3 and 5 degrees, I like to take photographs, but for some reason, I'm not getting anything in the pictures. Not a thing. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the basement. <laughs> we're going to do an investigation there. And then we're going to try to call Dutch Schultz for it again. And we're going to end up in Ben Conger's bedroom. Mm -hmm. So come on, let's go to the basement. basement. This is where the tunnel was in this room here. Back there was the beginning of it. It went under the stairs in this room. Here are the stairs here and it went out through that way. We've already been through this during the day. So what I want to do at this point is to see if I can communicate with the spirits using my dowsing rods. Dowsing rods like white sage have been used for thousands of years to detect energy. It's nice to get the ones 
that are just plain. Because when they heat up and accept the energy from the spirit world to move them, you can feel them vibrate in your hand. It is a really neat feeling. You get warmth all the way up your arm. Let's see if we can contact somebody, anybody. I'd like to speak with Dutch Schultz. Mr. Schultz, if you are here, please move the dowsing rods. Mr. Schultz, you can't be arrested anymore. You've already passed away. You're dead. I just want to speak to your spirit. I'm not here to harm you. Mr. Schultz, please come forward and move the dowsing rods. Mr. Schultz, please move the dowsing rods. I know you used to rent this home, and all your mobster friends would come here. Keep moving the dowsing rods for me. Keep moving the dowsing rods, Mr. Schultz. No one can harm you now. Feel them moving. They're, they're definitely Barely moving right now. See them, though. No, they're crossing right so now. They are? Okay, it's so, so dark. Stop. Mr. Schultz, if you're still with me, can you open the rods? I know it's very difficult to open them, but can you open the mm. rods for me, Mr. Schultz? Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to oh my right goodness there. gracious. <laughs> oh, I concentrate. Concentrate. It's okay, Mr. Schultz. It's okay. And I'm sorry it's loud. But this is important. We're going to keep with it. Mr. Schultz, open the rods. Open the rods, Mr. They're Schultz. They're going. Moving all right. Mr. Schultz, I have one more question to ask you, and I will know it's you. And only you, only Mr. Schultz answered this question. Mr. Schultz, point the rods in the direction of the tunnel. You know where the tunnel is. Point the rods in the direction of the tunnel, Mr. Schultz. Can you do that for me? Can you point the rods or a rod in the direction of the tunnel? <laughs> you don't want me to know where it is, but They're I already know where pointing. it is. They're both pointing to. I know where it is. Where we I want think you to is. point to where the tunnel is. It's okay. Point to where the tunnel is. Oh, they're both pointing to the same spot. Come on, Mr. Schultz, you're stronger than that. They're already pointing at the tunnel. I've got one pointing in the direction of, of the, the tunnel under the stairs, and I have one pointing... I, you know what? I can't see this block. I can feel it. Whoa! In the direction right here, just like I the said, corner. Yep. under the stairs. I'm getting goosebumps. Whoa! I don't know about you, but I'm getting goosebumps. Let's come. Let's come away from the pump. Wow! Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Thank you so much. 
Uh, I don't know if you can get this, but I am covered with, I'm covered with goosebumps and I'm sweating. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Covered in spider webs in my hair. Huh. Let's see if we get an EVP down here. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Thank you for pointing the dowsing rods in the area where the tunnel is. Mr. Schultz, can you say my name? Can you see me? Can you see the cameraman? Thank you for pointing the dowsing rods in the area where the tunnel is. Mr. Schultz, can you say my name? No. Can you see me? Can you see the cameraman? I'm hearing something, but I don't know. Tell if it's it's tough to there, tell because of the machine. Let's see if we can get in an area where we, where we can't quite get a lot of that machine. I'd like to speak to Lulu. Lulu, you're a brave woman hanging around with a dude like Dutch Schultz. All the mobster stuff, all the deaths, the murder, the stealing, and the stolen treasure. Do you know where the treasure is, Lulu? Where the treasures just make a sound, any kind of sound for me. I'd like to speak to Lulu. Lulu, you're a brave woman hanging around with a dude like Dutch Schultz. All the mobster stuff, all the death, the murder, the stealing, and the stolen treasure. Do you know where the treasure is, Lulu? Lulu, if you know where the treasure is, just make a sound. Any kind of sound for me. I did, but I'm not sure. Lulu, you're a brave woman hanging around with a dude like that Schultz. All the mobster stuff, all the death, the murder, the stealing, and the stolen treasure. Do you know where the treasure is, Lulu? That's what I heard. What is that? Lulu, if you know where the treasure is, mm. just it doesn't. It, I have to say. it doesn't come out and grab you. You know what I mean? But there's definitely something. You're not walking. you got sneakers on. I'm not moving. Nope. But it's almost like clicking and something noise. Let's walk further back. Let's see if we get further back working this motor. Lulu. Woman to woman. And I like dangerous men too. <laughs> Make a sound for me. Let me know you're here. Lulu, come forward and say something. Lulu, come forward and 
and say something. When I started laughing, I could hear like a like a feminine giggle behind my laugh. Here, listen to it again. It just kind of startles you. I pull my head back. Yeah. I, I can hear me me laughing. <laughs> I can hear almost like giggling behind me like she thought that was funny. Listen to it. Woman. Just listen. Woman to woman. And I like dangerous men too. <laughs> That's it. Can you hear that behind there? Listen. All right, I'm going to play it one Since more time. Time, I thought I heard something though. I'm, I'm going to play it one more time. Let me back it up. I heard a clicking noise back there, though. Yeah, I heard clicking noises, too. Yeah. Listen, one more time. All right, let me turn the volume up on this as high as it can go. Just listen to it. You're going to hear the giggling when I giggle. Okay. Lulu. Woman to woman. And I like dangerous men, too. Oh, yeah. You hear that? Like I heard that. It's like an echoing yeah, giggle. It's like she's behind me. Where are you? She is behind me. She thought that was funny. <laughs> Liking dangerous men. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we we got something going here. Lulu. I heard you giggle. I think we would have gotten along back then. Can you say something else? Giggle again. Make a sound of any kind. Just make a sound. A bang. Huh. I yes, heard a bang. Was. One more time. Hmm. One more time. Listen to it. You're going to hear a bang at the end, everybody. I heard you giggle. I think we would have gotten along back then. Can you say something else? Giggle again. Make a sound of any kind. Just make a sound. Uh, yep. You hear that? Clear as day. Yes, Clear as day. And, and there's, there's nothing here. Whoa. You know what? Just just for the heck of it, I didn't want to waste too much time down here, but uh, I'm going to take a couple pictures, okay? Grab some photographs. Are you hearing that? You definitely hear movement. Whoa. I just want to get a, grab a couple of photographs, and then we're gonna we'll, we'll head up to Ben Congress, Congress room. Ben, let's head up to Ben Congress. Why does my camera keep going? Hmm. What the heck is that? Did you see that? Did you get that on camera? Power button. I'm not touching anything. I, I, you could probably hear the noise of it going in and out on the camera. Whoa, that's bizarre. Let's head upstairs. We're going to do a ghost box session next. Now we're in Ben's room, where we died. I'm going to get some EMF readings first in here. Hmm. 
Yeah. Not even the electric uh, picking up any of that. Really, uh, really not power much on that one. here. Um, just checking to make sure we have. even baseline of nothing that's going to set it off. We do have the air conditioner here. This is not a hypersensitive uh, EMF meter, but what I am going to do is I'm going to leave it on as we're doing the ghost session. And maybe if we start getting some voices, maybe we get the EMF meter to go off as well. I'll place it right there. Now a ghost box works on white noise frequency and hopefully it creates, a, creates like a static and a white noise as it flips through AM and FM stations, whichever one you set it to. We ask it questions and maybe we can hear a voice come through with an answer. And then again, maybe not. Weird. That's real weird. Hmm. It's not turning on. It's not turning on at all. These batteries were Those brand were new. new and checked before we came in here. Yep. Uh, so bizarre. Really weird. I, what I'll do is I will uh, I'll do an EDP instead, and let's see if we can get the EMF meter to go on by itself as I'm doing some EDPs. Is there a spirit in here that's draining our batteries? Are you taking the energy from us or trying to? They may not know what batteries are, but they will know they're draining our energy. Are you taking my energy or trying to take my energy? Hmm, start it off weird. Is there a spirit in Go. here that's draining our batteries? Are you taking the energy from us or trying to? They may not know what batteries are, but they will know they're draining our energy. Are you taking my energy or trying to take my energy? You distinctly hear go. Okay, I'm going to play it back. It comes up right away. You're going to hear go. What I like to do is I wait, you know, about four seconds or so before I ask a question, and then I hold it at the end, about four seconds, because you never know where the spirit's going to place its sounds. And it did. Listen. You hear that? Go. Go. Yep. Go. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Go. Yep. All right. Go. Well, okay, okay. To the spirit that wants us to go, do you want us to leave this room? Or do you want us to leave the building? I can't leave the building until the morning. I have nowhere to go. Do you want us to leave? To the spirit that wants us to go, do you want us to leave this room? Or do you want us to leave the building? I can't leave the building until the morning. I have nowhere to go. 
you want us to leave? Dead silence. Yep. No pun intended. Let's ask another question. Are you happy we're here? Are you annoyed with us? I'd like to stay to the morning, if that's okay with you. But if you tell us to go, I will leave. Do you want us to leave? <laughs> Are you happy we're here? Are you annoyed with us? I'd like to stay to the morning, if that's okay with you. But if you tell us to go, I will leave. Do you want us to leave? Nothing, we get to stay. <laughs> Good. All right, um, at this time what I'd like to do is a quick run up to the attic and check the powder test to see if, um, if that has moved at all and uh, go over our pictures up there. The EMF meter was silent. Let's go up and check the uh, the powder chest, and I will come back and get that later. Okay. Okay. Let's go. To the attic. Now the last thing. So we're going to check our powder we placed. We can remember the pattern. Got a, uh, do you see that? It's got like a scratch mark in it. That's weird. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Not sure was that there before. Let me take some pictures. Let me see. You have to back up just a hair. Now I'm trying to get the same angle okay. I was at before. I got uh, my shadow in the way. Camera went out of focus. Interesting. Then we have that. Wow, I'll have to compare your things, but for what I'm seeing now, this is a line. Gosh, that lead screen's dirty. Huh. But you can see a line in the powder. See there's a line in the powder? It's hard to... Of course, but I, you can I see it right on the desk, too. Yeah, Let me I, I back it up and see if I can um, find it. It's bouncing it's on off all the, of these. Uh, the desk. Okay, back them up, back them up. Right here. All right, here's the these. Right I, I can't see the screen with this camera. We're going to have to upload it. I can barely all see right, it. Here, here's a good picture. This is what the powder looked like. I can't see the I screen can't really see the it. camera. We're gonna have to upload these in afterwards. It's definitely different. Um, yeah, the powder pattern has changed. That I do know. Uh, that mark, that line wasn't here, and this all looks thinner, like not as condensed as it was. So something like like I figured. I thought there was something. In fact, I'm gonna take a few more pictures, just for the heck of it, because I really felt there was something here. Now the camera's not functioning. Mm, boy. At all. Huh. It's, not, it's not functioning at all. Look at this. Now it goes back on. Wow. Yeah. That's Whoa. not right. Okay, I think at this time we're going to conclude this investigation.
I suggest yeah. if you really want a haunting place to go to, go to the Ben Congre Inn right here in Groton, New York, and you're going to have one heck of haunting time. This is Cece the Huntress. Thanks for tuning in, and we're going to see you on our next episode. Bye-bye. And now it's time for the evidence. Here's an EVP captured in the side dining room. I asked the spirit to touch us. Well, it didn't do that, but it did make a noise. And when asked on command to make a noise, it made a noise again. Listen to this. Can you touch one of us? Someone's puppy. Like a bang, like a knock. Can you make a sound? Another one. Another noise. I asked the infamous mobster Dutch Schultz to move my dowsing rods, and he did on command. Please move the dowsing rods. I know you used to rent this home, and all your mobster friends would come here. Keep moving the dowsing rods for me. Keep moving the dowsing rods, Mr. Schultz. No one can harm you now. I can feel him moving. I asked Dutch again if he could point my dowsing rods to the tunnel. He not only pointed one towards the tunnel, but he pointed the other one towards under the stairs where the tunnel continued out of the home. It's okay. Point to where the tunnel is. Oh, they're both pointing to the same spot. Come on, Mr. Schultz, you're stronger than that. They're already pointing at the tunnel. I made a comment to Lulu Rosencrantz, Dutch Schultz's mobster girlfriend. She got quite a chuckle out of it. You can hear me laugh, then you can hear her laugh. Lulu, woman to woman, and I like dangerous men too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You hear that? I, I heard that. It's like an echoing yeah, giggle. It's like she's behind me. And I like dangerous men too. <laughs> and I like dangerous men too. <laughs> I asked Lulu one more time to make a sound for me, and boy, did she ever make a sound. Here it is. Make a sound of any kind, just make a sound. Uh, yep. You hear that? Clear as day. Yes, Clear as day, and, and there's, there's nothing here. The spirits were draining our batteries. I asked them if this is what they were doing. I got a very definitive Class A EVP. Take a listen. Are you taking my energy or trying to take my energy? <gasps> hmm, it started off weird. Is there a spirit in here that's draining our batteries? Huh. Well, you hear that? Go. Go. Yep. Go. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Go. Yep. All right. This is what the powder looked like. I can't see the I screen. I can't really see it. Camera. We're going to have to upload these in afterwards. It's definitely different. Um, the powder pattern has changed. These pictures were taken at the beginning of the investigation. I placed the powder down, and I took a series of pictures of it. Now I'm comparing it with, right now, the pictures taken at the end of the evening, and you can clearly see that there is a scratch line and some of the powder has been um, displaced. And here are a few orbs I captured in the attic. Hi, this is Cece the Huntress. I hope you enjoyed my show on the Ben Conger Inn in Groton, New York. That place is hopping. You gotta get there, you gotta get a room. Till next time, this is me. See you later. Bye-bye. Mwah.